they would quickly get totally addicted to it, totally addicted to the money. She would make like 5,000 bucks in two hours. Hello everyone, it's Rose Fatal and you're watching Fatally Honest. This is the third episode of a seven-part series, Male Sex Worker in America, A Gigolo's Life. In this episode, Joe tells us how he transitioned from being an escort to a pimp and how this affected his love life. Want to know more about Joe's crazy experiences within the sex industry? Many more episodes can be found in the playlist linked in the description down below. Disclaimer. I do not endorse entering the sex industry under any capacity. I strongly suggest that no one attempt to copy anything they've seen or heard in my videos. Furthermore, I do not necessarily agree with any of the opinions or stories told by my guests in my videos. In addition to operating as a male escort and porn actor, I understand that you also used to be a pimp. What came first, the escorting or pimping? So I did escorting first. Um, the way that I got in was um, through this girl that I met. And um, I had this client one time that really wanted to have sex with me. And I said, you know, man, I'm, I, I'm not going to have sex with you. And I just told him up front because sometimes it's not worth the 300 bucks to go and mess with somebody. I told him, but how would you like to like direct a live porn acting thing and I'll have sex with a girl in front of you? And he's like, mm, okay, let's try it. I've never done that before. And so like, he's this crazy guy just trying to live life. And he uh, gives me a few days to find a girl. And um, I did, I found this girl named Tracy and uh, I met her at five in the morning at IHOP. Mm -hmm. And um, we ended up going back to her house and having sex for like three days straight in her room, like all day. It was insane. And um, then like I asked her, I was like, you know what, you should just be my girlfriend. And like we were totally in love. We we're in love. Then she said, yeah, that's, let's do it. But I'm not going to stop escorting. I said, okay, whatever. I'm not going to stop escorting either. <laughs> so we were this crazy couple that were escorting and yeah. craziness. Um, we actually never did the job in front of that guy, mm -hmm. but um, I I would do jobs here and there. But I learned very quickly that she was making so much more money than me. She was able to just do job after job after job after job and just yeah. like oh my god, and she she was actually having sex with people um and uh i learned that um so she i would ride with her sometimes and i would be waiting in the car while she's having sex with another guy yeah. which was very difficult it was that i think that hardened me mm. that kind of made me numb to life that on top of the drugs and on top of my just nothing will stop me ambition and just hardened heart i i was just so um devastated from my father's passing and i didn't have uh, any authority figure in my life and nobody could tell me what to do and uh <sighs> um so like her, it was very tough so how did this result in your becoming a pimp so yes um she was uh, she came out of this job one time and she gave me like 40 bucks or something like that which was like that's not that much money mm -hmm. but when she gave that money to me something in my brain clicked I was like oh she's like hey thank you for waiting for me and being my like protector or something <laughs> I don't know what she said but when she said that and gave me the money it just totally clicked and I'm like whoa this is awesome. I could do this with other girls. And um, I didn't do that with other girls at the time. A month went by, but um, through that month, um, I decided to start hiring girls. Mm -hmm. And um, I typed on um, bunches of ads, all types of ads. It was just really manipulative. So um, 
a lot of the girls would reply and then I'd be like, hey, look, what it is is escorting. Have you ever heard of escorting? Like, no, what is that? And so I'd tell them and kind of go through the whole thing and they would quickly get totally addicted to it, totally addicted to the money. And um, after about a month, I had seven girls that was working with me. And um, I get a phone call from Tracy. We um, <laughs> we ended up uh, decide. I, I told her, you know, like this is what I'm doing. I've got all these girls that I'm working with, and we're making a lot of money right now. We're making like a thousand, two thousand, three thousand bucks a day, mm -hmm. just off. I'm making that off of like the thirty percent that I was charging the girls. Yeah. And um, she uh, said, "Okay, well, how can I help?" And um, Eventually, she turned into the phone girl that was taking all the calls uh -huh. and then sending all the information to all the girls that were working for us and sending them on their jobs. And then um, and it worked out really, really well for a while. We made a lot of money. It was totally a volatile relationship. And eventually, um, we split up and I was kicked out of the house and um, had to leave uh, a bunch of the girls. Um, you, the girls that work for you, are, um, they come and go very fast. It's a very high turnover rate. It's rare to have a girl that sticks around for like a year or longer. Um, the average is probably like a month or two. Um, it's a super high turnover rate. Because I was always finding like really young, really good looking girls that um, they would do it for a while, get their little money, and then go on to the next thing. Yeah. And it, it, I like that. I, I wanted to. I I definitely didn't want people to like stick in it for a really long time. Yeah. I think one of the the longest um, working girls that I had was this 53 year old lady who was awesome. She was super super awesome. She looked like Jennifer Aniston. What? She was yeah. She's super hot. And she was the one that was making the big bucks. She would make like five thousand bucks in two hours. And I learned you know it's actually better to work with girls that are age 40, like 35 to 40, mm -hmm. because a lot of the really old guys that are like 70, 80, mm -hmm. they're the ones with the money. And they're the ones that don't have anything to do but spend it on women and yeah. fun and whatever. Yeah. They're retired and just waiting for a good time. And so they don't want to spend their time with somebody that's really young, like 20 because they can't relate to them. They, they're, yeah, there's no connection there. Yeah, so a 60, 70, 80 year old guy is totally into a 30, 40, 50 year old woman more than a 20 year old. Yeah, and I mean, there's rare guys that are like, yeah, I don't want that, I want this 18 year old girl. So, I mean, there's, everybody's got their own uh, cup of tea, but uh, for the most part, that was, that was my bread and butter is um, girls that were older and they would make so much money. Mm -hmm. Would you say that your experience as a pimp benefited your career as an escort? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, yes. Um, because I was a pimp and probably worked with about 300 plus women mm -hmm. and men. Um, I would send them on a job and they would come back and tell me everything that happened. So I'm getting like tons and tons and tons of information, stories and knowledge about the whole industry. And I'm able to piece together the right way to get through it all. Many of the experiences Joe presented were not at all what I expected from the life of a pimp. I was also surprised to hear that older sex workers were able to out-earn younger ones. Have any of you ever been involved in the sex industry? If so, have you experienced any of what he described? In the next episode, Joe tells us his scariest encounters whilst working in the sex industry. They include being robbed, being hunted by the police, nearly being shot at, getting run over by a truck, and more! If you think this story is outrageous and you've enjoyed it, please give this video a like. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and ding the bell for notifications for future content. It's been Fate to be honest, ciao!